glad you're back with us and also back with us, Rebecca Freeland. Rebecca, thank you for coming back on the program. And uh, I know you got something else going. You got a new book coming out, Taking the Gate. Let's dive into this. What is this all about? Mm, well, you know, I think a lot of times we look at other people and we see how God is moving in their lives and we want to tap into that anointing for ourselves. Sure. And this provides a really strategic way where we can pick up some biblical tools and really see God show up in our lives. Okay, this is, now I've got a picture here and uh, you said this is part of what has happened in the book and it's a picture of you in the hospital ba bed. You must have gone been in an accident. Explain what this, explain this. Yeah, the picture shows a clip of me when I was nine years old. I was in a car accident on Christmas Day. And my whole family was involved in the car accident and I had a lot of glass on my face. I was thrown from the car. And um, so I had to have plastic surgery. They had to go in there and stitch up my face, you know? So after came out of the hospital and got some healing, we realized that there was one little piece of glass right close to my eye that had not been removed. You could literally feel it. And you know, when you're kind of moving into junior high years, that's just bragging rights, right? Yeah, you know, I've yeah. got a little piece of glass in there, you know? Yeah. Um, but as I kept growing, it began to hurt. So they had to go in there and pull out that piece of glass. And then fast forward about five years down the road, I was having a pain in my eye. And they had to take me back into the hospital or into the doctor's office. And they realized that there was a little shard of glass that had embedded itself in my eyeball and was just now coming to the surface. And of course they were able to get it out and praise God didn't have any long-term yeah, really. results from that. But I realized that that is kind of the journey of the healing process that so many of us go through. We have things happen in our life, whether it's traumas or even generational things that are passed down to us. And sometimes we think we deal with those things, but just as part of the natural growth process, there's some more stuff that comes to the surface. And right. So this book is a tool that we can use to really kind of strategically walk through a few areas. It's got prayers in it, it's got declarations, and we can kind of pull out some of that leftover shrapnel, if you will, yeah. and be so much more freer and healed to move forward. Well, kind of walk us through at number one, just like you said, you had stuff left there for you. I can see the connection. We have a tendency to keep on. Sometimes we hold on to things we shouldn't hold on to. Sometimes we don't know they're even there. Yeah. So how do you, how do you walk through this? Because you're really talking about it, you know, obviously it's revival radio TV, but you're really talking about a personal revival of what's happening here. So Absolutely. All right, so launch into it. To explain what, how this works. Yeah, and I'm so excited about this because it, it does work. I feel like um, people often, we, we're looking for both wisdom and understanding, if I can say it this way. We, can, we need understanding to be able to identify some of those open doors or open gates in our life. And then we need wisdom to know what to do with those places, okay. how to apply God's truth so we can receive healing and move forward. And so that's what this book does. It identifies about five different gates in every person's life. Every human being has these, whether it's generational things, whether it's wounds from past ministry trauma, whether it's areas of forgiveness or occult, you know, witchcraft things or anything that has been opened up in our life. There's about five major areas. And we talk through each one of those in the book from a biblical standpoint, and we identify strategically those places. You just write a list of the things that we talk about in the book, and there's prayers, declarations that you can pray as we begin to identify these things and apply God's truth. And what I've heard over and over from people, that they feel lighter afterwards. They can hear the voice of God clearer. It's like baggage left that they didn't even know they were carrying. And some people have gotten physically healed from breaking off the spiritual trauma that's been holding on to them. And they've been able to get free even physically. So why do we hold on to trauma? Well, I Because you would, that seems kind of silly. You seem like, well, of course we want to get rid of trauma, but well, we have a tendency to hold on to it. Why is that? I think it tends to hold on to us. Ah. And, and sometimes there's things, just like that little piece of glass in my face that we don't even know that it's there. And sometimes our natural growth, even spiritually growing closer to the Lord, it kind of brings things to the surface. And it's just knowing what to do with those things when they come up. So, all right, so give me an example of, of, of how this works. 
you know, uh, first off, how'd you get the, uh, what was the inspiration for you to do this, to start this book? So I've had a lot of mentoring by really good deliverance ministers. And I talk more about that in the books and who've really taken me under their wing and poured into me. Um, and, and I've been leading people through this for the past 15 years or so. And finally thought, okay, I need to bring my own resource in and create a space that has kind of some things that I've ministered to people privately and have learned as I've, you know, put all these pieces together that have been really effective and create There's something a, for our ministry. A quote in here, you said, some books are written in peace and safety, others are written uh, while hopping between storm clouds and dodging power outages. Uh, I'm like, I, I think I've been on that <laughs> cloud. Yeah, so uh, explain that. I know I'm kind of, I'm keep rapid fire here, but what, what do you mean by that? So I started writing this book earlier this, uh, this year when I was taking these principles and I was speaking in churches in the British Isles. And I had been training, I have a ministry in East Texas, we train people with prophetic teams, we take people through these things. Um, and, and I started taking it over to some you know, churches in other nations. Mm. And I began to see people get free. Like it was like a three hour course that we could just do with any group of people. And people started totally experiencing breakthrough. Some people even say, I have never heard personally from God. But as they started doing this, you know, after they would tackle this three hour session, in the middle of the night, the next night, they would have a dream from the Lord. We have that happen pretty regularly, where after people do this, they start having dreams and revelations from the Lord. Because it's like it clears up your spirit, your spirit man, to be sure. able to receive. And so I started writing as I was on the road and uh, staying at a place in, in Wales, um, stayed in different hotels. Some of them were actually locations where you know Masonic organizations had met or been founded. And so there was actually a lot of spiritual warfare in the atmosphere in those right. places. And then came home to Texas and we were right in the middle of major power outages. So, you know, I'm trying to find ways to plug in my laptop into a battery base and just, so it was a lot of, you know, in between places. Um, it was not an easy book to write, um, but I feel like that even kind of pressed it to be more effective, you know, because you want so it to work. So what, what does it mean you say, take the gates, explain that, break that down. Sure. So we have different gates in our lives and some of them are easy to identify. So for instance, our eye gate, you know, if, if we actually identify that's a place that allows things to come into our life, um, we can begin to ask ourselves, how well am I doing with taking this gate? You know, which actually letting Holy Spirit help us really own what comes into my eyes that may be affecting my heart affecting my spirit man. Other gates may be, again, those five that I mentioned earlier that are really common ones, that the enemy comes in and tries to take up residence. So like generational curses, just like Adam and Eve, how they sinned and it affected all their children, or how David sinned with Bathsheba and adultery, and that affected not only them, but also their family. There are different generational curses that we didn't have anything to do with but our ancestors opened up doors for us. And so we can learn how to, again, identify, identify those places, close those doors and really get free. And it, it really is just picking up the tools Jesus gave to us. So how do you do that when you don't know? Like you, you mentioned your ancestors and I mean, the internet wasn't around for a lot of our ancestors. So um, how do you know what what happened? How do you, how do you identify the trauma or the door the gate that was open how do you do that well we always tell people when in doubt cast it out which is what one of my mentors used to say and so um for instance you, you you're not responsible for what you don't know but a lot of us really do know quite a bit about our parents and grandparents so for instance my um grandfather committed suicide before i was ever born uh, we found out later that somebody was doing voodoo on him Oh, and he wow. was in a place of mental torment, never knew that Jesus could help him overcome these things and set him free and ended up committing suicide. So because I know about that, I can identify there was a spirit of death 
that was loosed on my family. There was a spirit of probably mental torment and depression. There's things that you can see from that and you can actually see them trying to come down the family line when multiple people are kind of going through the same spiritual oppression. So we try to identify the things we know and the book helps us do that. Um, and then, then there's also a prayer that asks the Lord to cover us from things that we don't know you know, and that in his grace and mercy that he would, you know, break off anything that's unseen. Why don't you take the next few minutes and pray for the people at home? I'm, I, I can feel people watching going, oh man, I, I, not only do I need to get that book, but I need to understand more. So take, take your liberty. Mm. Oh, Holy Spirit, we just thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Father, we thank you um, that, that you made a way for us to put on Christ that you made a way for us to walk in victory, to experience that abundant fullness of life. And I think you're right now, Lord, I just feel like you're challenging people to take the next step in this season and say, you know, maybe I, I don't know how to put on my spiritual armor. Or I don't know how to anoint my home with oil, but I'm ready to learn. So Lord, I just pray that you would empower people with courage right now. And in these dark days, we've got to walk in everything Jesus enabled us to walk in. So Father God, I just pray courage and, and grace and wisdom for people as they take this journey with you. In Jesus' name, amen.